So, you know an impact player when you see one in action. The colleague who always gets handpicked to help out in a crisis? An impact player. That team member who seems to have a natural ability to solve problems. That's right, another impact player. A leader who time and again knows what to do and, even better, gets it done? You guessed it, yet another impact player. These not-all-heroes-wear-capes type of people are invaluable in any organization or team because they can be relied on, no matter how novel or complex the task at hand might be, to find the way forward. But what is it, exactly, about these influential superheroes that sets them apart from everyone else? And more importantly, how did they get their superpower? So welcome, fellow mortal. I'm Renee, and you can think of me as your Blinkist coach for the next 20 minutes as we focus up and drill a few basics from Liz Wiseman's Impact Players. Together, we'll tackle their unique mindset and learn how they multiply their impact through consistent performance. But what's the goal, you ask? Great question. It's to show that you, too, can become an impact player and attract other impact players to your team while you're at it. So let's huddle up, focus up, and bring along that A-game to this mini boot camp in pushing your impact to the next level. Along the way, you'll hear about everyday people from coaches, engineers, actors, office workers, and parents who became impact players in everything from ending wars to achieving their professional dreams. Along the way, we'll uncover their secrets for overcoming the hurdles on the road to becoming an impact player. First up, the mental game. So what is it really that makes impact players so influential? Sure, they're smart, talented, and have a great work ethic, but so do many contributors out there who don't make as much of a difference. Look, there's Monica Padman. She dreamed of making people laugh and feel by becoming a professional actor. That's how she landed a role on a small TV show. Right here on set, she met the A-list actress Kristen Bell, who mentioned she had a young daughter. Padman instantly took the opportunity to offer babysitting services as a side gig. While working at the family home, Padman met Bell's husband, Dak Shepard, another well-known actor. Padman and Shepard found themselves in endless, fiery, and entertaining debates, so he suggested they start a podcast to share them with the world. Hundreds of episodes later, Padman is living her dream, making people laugh and feel. Looking back on that first encounter with Bell, she could have just asked for a career boost for her acting career. Instead, she decided to offer help where it was needed and uncovered greater opportunities as a result. Professionals like Monica and many like her in other industries are rare. The people who don't just do the job they have, they also do the job that's needed. They identify where they can help and they step up to take on the challenge. It's precisely these kinds of people Liz Wiseman calls impact players, and they're a valuable asset to any team or organization. Just like in sports, impact players in the workplace bring their A-game to everything they do. They raise the bar and encourage a culture of growth and creativity. So what's their secret? That would be their mental game. See, most professionals have what is known as a contributor mindset. Unlike impact players, those with a contributor mindset are not called to duty when things get tough, because while a normal contributor may be committed to his task, as soon as a problem comes up, he gets sidetracked, loses focus on the goal. Meanwhile, the impact player sees a challenge as an opportunity to be embraced. So if you want to multiply your impact, you must grasp the same mindset. The impact player approach is not just marginally different from other contributors, it is radically opposed. This brings us to our first pro tip. Expand your focus to find your win. According to a youth soccer coach, the best players on the team don't look much at their own footwork during a match. That's because they're too busy scanning the field, ready to adjust their performance in response to their observations. The same applies in organizations. The best employees don't limit their focus to their own tasks. They also observe what's happening around them to check if any other job needs doing. Once they identify where they can help, they jump in. To be of maximum value as a contributor, you too need to know what your leaders, customers, and stakeholders value the most. Ask yourself, how well do you grasp the skills that are indispensable to your organization? 
A quick way to tune into these priorities is to identify your W-I-N, or WIN. That stands for What's Important Now. This is something valued by your organization that's also important to your immediate boss or stakeholder. Think about your organization's business model and compare it to your stakeholder's top three priorities. For instance, if you work for a nonprofit organization, your win could involve getting more volunteers involved in your organization, attracting more funding, or innovating new ways to support your cause or target community. Once you've established your all-important win, look for places where your own capabilities overlap so you can find an opportunity to contribute. Are there any problems that you can tackle with your unique skills? This step will also help you form your agenda. Finally, make sure your boss or stakeholder knows about your agenda. Craft a short statement that captures how your work will help them to achieve the priorities on their agenda. For example, you could say, I'm aware that our top priority is customer retention, so I'm making profiles of our different customer segments to help us better understand their needs. It's a good idea to begin your one-on-one meetings like this so that everyone is on the same page. However, you decide to communicate your agenda, be it a phone call, text message, or email, make sure you send the clear message that you understand what's important to your stakeholders without needing to be told. Remember, impact players don't wait until they are given a task. They proactively identify problems to solve. Impact players don't just transform workplaces either. Betty Williams was an ordinary citizen of Belfast when political violence broke out in her hometown in the late 1960s. It was the start of the 30-year conflict known as the Troubles, fought between Catholic nationalists who wanted to leave the United Kingdom and Protestant Unionists who wanted to remain. Williams, an office worker and mother, wanted to do her part to improve the situation. So, in 1976, she began circulating petitions to women and inviting them to march in protest. Eventually, she gathered tens of thousands and established the Women for Peace movement, which was credited with reducing the amount of violence in Northern Ireland over the ensuing years. Williams started off with no political power. She simply wanted to see change, so she took the lead and fought for it. Impact players like Betty don't wait for permission to influence the course of history. They show initiative and take responsibility. And when they lead, they do so collaboratively so that others want to play on their team. By contrast, people operating with a contributor mindset look to their leaders for direction. While loyal followers can be trusted to carry out requests, they uphold the status quo. When they spot problems, mere contributors might be concerned, sure. But unlike impact players, they don't take charge unless it's already their job to lead. To become an impact player, don't wait to be appointed. Be on the lookout for everyday situations that lack clear leadership and fill the vacuum yourself. You don't even have to wait for a huge problem to come up. Listen for ambient problems, seemingly small, persistent problems that everyone complains about but does nothing about. Those perpetual inefficiencies that accumulate into huge wastes over time. For example, it is estimated that 63% of meetings have no planned agenda. If that's often the case for you, offer valuable clarity at the start of a meeting by simply asking, what's the most important thing for us to accomplish in the next half an hour? One impact player saw people spending too much time on presentation slides and identified this opportunity for improvement. She developed a tool to help, which the company rolled out globally, saving hundreds of hours of work as a result. It goes to show, as we'll talk about next, that stepping up is only the beginning. To have an impact, you also have to finish strong. Next up, the fundamentals of finishing. Have you ever seen one of those crime thrillers about a special agent on a secret mission? They dodge constant threats and fend off the ever-menacing villains, and they do so with grace and ease. The agent is determined, hardworking, and resilient, and always gets the mission accomplished. Well, impact players are a lot like these fictional agents. They embark on their missions without needing constant direction. Along the way, they may call into headquarters to summon some support, but in general they lead themselves. And no matter what, they pursue their mission to the very end. 
The reason impact players are able to finish the job comes down to just two characteristics, resilience and grit. Resilience stems from their belief that a solution can be found and that it will be discovered if they just work at it long enough. Grit is their impulse to hunker down and put in the work necessary to find it, even when additional problems pop up along the way. Other contributors, by contrast, tend to escalate problems when they arise. They'll alert the relevant department that something's gone wrong, then sit back and wait for somebody else to figure it out. Impact players, on the other hand, will use their resilience and grit to stick with a problem when it comes up, even if he needs to rally others to solve it. For an example of this kind of resilience and grit in practice, take Parth Vyashnov, a principal software engineer at Salesforce, the customer relationship giant. One day, he got an urgent call from a colleague saying that a new product release had been launched, but oddly enough, the new features weren't visible to the customers. Vyashnov began investigating the root of the problem and found that the issue lay with a crucial piece of code known as the release formula. To put it in layman's terms, millions of hours of engineering work was now on pause because of a simple coding error. Parth quickly formulated a fix, but he had to be sure it was the right one before he could implement it, in case it triggered other problems. So he gathered a team of software architects to test and approve it. The block features were soon released, but Parth still wasn't done. He worked on the problem for another week with his team and even convinced another product group to take ownership of the framework, therefore eliminating the problem permanently. So the next time you're faced with an unforeseen problem, remember that impactful people finish strong. And in the process, they aren't afraid to ask for input, rally help, and get feedback. Listen. Listen to this orchestra tuning up for a performance. Notice how each instrumentalist carefully adjusts their pitch until it matches the reference pitch and each other. Even outside the orchestra, musicians tune by comparing the pitch of their instrument with a reference pitch, be it a tuning fork, a digital tuner, or a fellow musician. The goal is to continue adjusting the instrument until the two pitches match. Just like the orchestra, professionals usually need a reference to recognize where they may be off pitch. Unless you are extremely experienced, you won't be able to analyze the subtle nuances in your own performance, but you can get better at it by asking for feedback and making incremental adjustments in response. Impact players get mentored by leaders because they are seen as coachable. They seek out feedback, receive more guidance, and achieve better outcomes as a result. The process is what's known as closing the feedback loop, and you can leverage it to your own benefit. To launch the feedback loop, ask for guidance. For instance, you can ask your manager, boss, or stakeholder, am I going in the right direction? Where am I straying off course? What should I continue doing, and what should I let go of? According to the feedback you receive, you can adjust your performance. In the process, check back in with your mentors to let them know that you're valuing their guidance. Take Braden Hancock, the CEO of Snorkel AI. Despite his lack of engineering experience, he secured an internship at the Air Force Research Laboratory, which happened to be right in his hometown. This, in turn, helped him get another internship at Johns Hopkins University under the direction of Mark Dredze, an associate professor of computer science. Since Hancock didn't have a computer engineering degree, he took an online programming course before getting to the lab. Once there, he sought feedback from his professor every step of the way. As he implemented their guidance, he looped back in to his professor regarding his next steps. This internship opened a new career path for Hancock, which led to a doctoral program in computer science at Stanford University. Even after the internship, he looped his mentor in, letting Dr. Dredzi know where his advice had led. To this day, he continues to keep in touch with other mentors. Certainly, the now Dr. Hancock entered the workforce with access to opportunity, but these practices took him to the next level. Wherever you start, closing the feedback loop can take you further. The end game. Lightening the load. Isla is a highly capable chief operating officer at a global technology company. 
She is so hardworking that she usually is the last person to leave the office, often staying late to fix other people's work without telling them. The problem is that her colleagues usually find out that she's redoing their work and they don't like it. So they try to undo her efforts in the process, also sucking in her boss and others into the conflict. As good as Isla's intentions are, she isn't adding value through her hard work. Actually, she's adding to everyone's burden, which is the exact opposite of what an impact player would do. So what does this have to do with me, you might ask? Well, the truth is that even if you don't realize it, you may be adding to your supervisor's workload in significant ways. To see where you stand, ask yourself how often you seek help or guidance from your boss when things get tough, or pass work on to your colleagues when you get behind or overwhelmed. While ordinary contributors may compound everyone's workload, impact players actually reduce the burden on everyone else. Even in those cases where you may not be able to lighten the workload, you can do your best to make the process go more smoothly. Consider Carl Duse, who was just 23 when he became business manager at SAP Innovation Services. As soon as he started his new job, he looked up chief of staff, a title a notch or two higher than his, to understand his career path. Based on this, he created a three-slide presentation about his ambitions for his own role to present to his CEO. On slide one, he demonstrated how he understood his role. On slide two, he broke down his current skills and abilities. On slide three, he outlined his plan for improvement and growth. Despite his young age, Carl was recognized as an impact player thanks to his passion and perspective. But just as importantly, Carl was recognized for his ability to digest data quickly, atomize it, and communicate it clearly. Whenever you communicate at work, Summarize your thoughts, or a larger discussion, into clear bullet points. When you make yourself easy to understand, you're also making yourself easy to work with. Do this consistently, and you will develop a reputation as a high-performing, time-saving player that everyone wants on their team. You've just listened to the Blinks to Impact Players by Liz Wiseman. The main takeaway? In order to multiply your impact on your environment, keep your eyes open and notice problems beyond your job that warrant attention. Without waiting for direction, identify where you can help and step up to do so. By embracing a mindset of leadership, grit, and resilience, you can make a difference and inspire others to rally behind you too. So, did you like what you heard? Did this inspire you to become an impact player in your own life? Or was there something that we could have done better? Let me know. Well, before you leave, don't forget to subscribe to Books in Blinks and leave your thoughts in the comments section below. Also, check out the other titles in our playlist. I'm Pedro from Books in Blinks and I hope to see you here again.